How's it going, everybody? It's me, Shane. I'm here to give you another Mashal Magic and Muscles episode review. Today's episode is episode 10, Mash Burn Dead in the Divine Visionary. Before I go any further, please hit that like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell to be notified of more videos just like this one. Uh, we're trying to get our way to 1,000, and uh, we're getting there, but we're having fun while we're getting there, aren't we? Telling you. Episode 10. <sighs> I'm trying to remember. Last week was really good. I actually really enjoyed it. The swerve of having the heavy hitters go first. And this episode, I figured he would be fighting the bad guy, but he's not fighting the bad guy. He's meeting, well, just like you said, Divine Visionary. And I thought the other guy, I thought that's what they were alluding to. His name is, I, well, in Japanese, it's Abel. But if you're speaking English, it's probably Abel. But I'll go with Abel because I don't like the villain and I'm going to pronounce his name funny. Because he's an a-hole. But this episode, the highlight, is another swerve. So, Mr. Narrator-san brings us, tells us about the victory of Lance and Mash. And brings us into Dot and Finn getting ready to fight Love Cute, Cute Love, however you say her name. And Milo Genius. My little genius, my little genius. And... <laughs> and... So, Cute Love... These characters are weird as hell, y'all. I didn't even write this in my notes. This is how this is how well I remember this. Cute love is an odd ass character as well. Milo Genius just leaves. She's like, I'm going. And Dot's like, wait, hey, hold wait, hold on a minute. Hold on a minute here. And her whole thing is, Do you love me? Do you like me? Do you think I'm cute? And she says this over and over and over again. And you have Dot, who's like, unfortunately. My future fiance, I have to go save her. And I'm just thinking to myself, I'm right there with Finn. I'm like, I'm sitting there like, what the hell is going on here? Given that she don't even like you, bro. Don't don't be that trope. You already super mega hard simp trope, weird main character syndrome guy who's jealous of attractive dudes, even though I mean, in this show people only get ugly when they make weird faces unless you're old or something don't do that don't do that please and was it cute um, cute or love we'll call her lc lc goes okay well then you can die now her her wand kind of looks like a scepter like it has a heart on it looks like a scepter but She's telling him he could die, and her dad, daddy said that any guy that doesn't cherish me, you know, they, I can do whatever I want. I can kill him. Uh, she says that girls are princesses from the moment they are born and deserve to be served. Deserve to be served and loved and cherished and blah, she blah, blah, blah. So if you don't like me, you don't love me, I'm going to go after you. Here's the crazy part. She is literally dots type he even says i'm into that like a weirdo but he's like again i'm sorry now her her magic is wind magic tornay gus i'm not gonna i'm not gonna lie i can poke fun at the names you know like x plum like explode bomb or tornay gus or uh what's the other ones I can't remember the accelerate one but you know they take two words and they mash them together you know what I like it. At least you're not you're not stealing anything. You're attempting to do something different. But her wind magic is slapping him around. Excuse me. She's talking trash about Mash and the other friends. She even gets him in this wind tornado cage thing. And Dot's ready to give up. And we get a flashback from him where his older sister saves him from more or less kids bullying him. Saying, hey, your broom's new, right? Trade with me. And she comes in, she has exploded, explodes these little kids saying, look, you're going to have a problem when you actually get a real friend. And he's like, a real friend? Yeah, someone who gets mad and sad on your behalf. Because when you meet somebody like that who's genuine, don't ever betray them. You need to fight back and do your best. And he snaps out of it. She's about to go after Finn. Y'all... Finn is reminding me of Zenitsu. There's no way that this kid is is this. 
I hate to use the word lame because I know some people don't like it. But remember, I'm a 90s kid. It's just when I say lame, I'm just saying he he, he sucks. He kind of sucks. He kind of sucks, man, because he doesn't. He just like, eh, don't hurt me. Ooh. Is his power going to happen when he sneezes? Is he going to be like launch and sneezes? Oh, I got magic power. Is he going to be like Zenitsu and falls asleep? Now he has magic power. Is he going to? Is he? What else? What What else can he do? Uh, we got sneeze. We have falling asleep. Could he get drunk like Rock Lee? You know, Rock Lee's cool without being drunk. I don't I don't know. But Doc gets out of this cage and he has this cross on his head. And I, 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 I'm I, not going to lie to you. I kind of forgot about this. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. I kind of forgot about this. Um, apparently, and it just, just so happens that Elsie, cute, she's heard about people like this before. Uh, the people with this born with the cross on their head, uh, they battle demons uh whose magic power you know their magic power goes into overload overload when they get past a certain threshold with their emotion and it's called era cruise did not take time to look this up this was definitely looks cool because without that stupid headband dude's hair looks regular i guess the headband is guarding the cross maybe Maybe it's Garden Across, but he looks like a cool character and he speaks calmly and he's confident and he does this machine gun x thing, but it's hanging in the air. And he says, you know, how can I just sit back while someone is trash talking my buddy, right? And he just died a hundred times. He sends all those fireballs at her. Doesn't hit her. Doesn't hit Finn because it's in a circle. He says, I'm not too king on beating up girls, so give up right now. Or I might have to make exception. She's like, done. Cute Love is probably one of the most, I hate to say realistic characters. Because when you hear, when people chatter about anime, like, I would have quit right there. Well, she quit right there. And what, what was lending to Dot being upset is she openly said, whoever opens the door that gets down here, Milo Genius, my little genius has a spell that can turn someone into stone that opens up that door. It takes effect after two hours apparently they've been down there for about two hours and there's 30 minutes left but her not being able to take him out made him break the spell and come over there to fight them he he has stone magic brings up bitey face which was going to get finn and dot took it and has all these hands and then out of nowhere well, not out of nowhere, because we see him. This episode is called The Divine Visionary. The Divine Visionary we see is Rainis Amis, Finn's big brother. And he's obviously he's on assignment from uh, Headmaster Wahlberger because he mentions he's like, oh, the old man got me coming down here to do the, the thing and the place and the thing and the guy. And his big ass sword breaks the it hits the dude in the stomach massive blade bigger than the their human bodies and the guys like they're all like wait why is the divine visionary down here what's going on oh no milo genius who he's called a genius because apparently he is the f- only first year to be in magia lupus and He's still thinking stuff. Well, he's still a student, right? He's just a student. I can get him. He tries to use his same bite stone thing. And the guy's sword doesn't even doesn't even use his wand. His sword magic just cuts it in half. And he's like, do, do not waste my time. And makes all like innumerable amount of swords. I'm talking dmc virgil summon swords level of swords i'm talking about level three ultimate x factor coming down on this kid right for those of those who get that reference thank you you are the coolest and he's taking this kid out and the kids apologize he's saying you spill it i need i want to know what's going on lc she's like i'm gonna defect to uh adler because rain is he is the ace. He is the top. He is the head of that dorm. So she just took off her robe. I guess their colors are black and white. Which kind of looks cool. And the guy's like, I'm sorry. I didn't, I, you know, I, I regret not 
you know, not standing up to him. I couldn't do anything. Boy, Reynes kicks his ass, like kicks him in the ribs and just stomps him over and over again. And he says, I don't, you know, words mean nothing. It's actions. Your actions are what matters. And for people like yourself, he also called him a weak, a weak scum. <laughs> Dude gets smashed instantly. <laughs> Calls him a weak scum. And says, you know, people like you, you don't learn unless there's physical pain behind it. So you never, ever consider doing something like this again. He's he's repeatedly stomping into this kid and he looks to everybody else. He's like, all right, get out. Leave now. <laughs> Elsie, she's pieces. Peace out. She's gone. Dot is still amazed by the level of magic that he is able to do like being at that divine visionary level finally finn goes oh nisa he is like oh big brother so which they have the same last name i don't know how dot would be like oh yeah that's his big brother how would you all just now realize whatever but there's the swerve that is the swerve i'm talking about you have this immensely powerful character show up where the heroes is like, oh, man, I use my super special card to deal with this chick. All right, let's see if we can fight this guy. And you think, oh, maybe Finn will pop up. No, Finn does nothing. He is, at this point, he's lower than Yamcha because at least Yamcha can fight. But anyway, Finn, not Finn, MASH meets this guy. This guy's on assignment because apparently underneath this hidden thing that apparently no one's supposed to know about... Innocent Zero, the guy that was mentioned last episode, the villain man that that everyone's looking for, or at least the people in the magical bureau world are looking for. Apparently, he could be down here. This is where his base of operations is. And Rainus runs into a munching Mash. He was ahead of him, by the way. Mash is munching, I guess, you know, getting his getting his proteins and carbs up. And the, and in order to say, okay, I need to know if you're in league with Innocent Zero, if you're actually a student. So there's this thing called the Arachnibus. Little spider, tell spider puns, has four of its eyes. It's all numbers. So it's to judge your magical power, your power level. And on their initial meeting, Rainus sends one of his big ass swords at Mash. Mash catches it with two fingers. He's like, hey, that's kind of rude. What what was the purpose of that? And the spider goes, he has zero magical power. Scans it again. He's like, I've been doing this for a long time. This can't be, can't be right. Still at zero. So Rainus does a move called 3% partisan. Sends like 10 swords at him. Mash makes a chair out of them swords. Not even kidding. And he goes, okay, it doesn't look like he's using magic. It looks like he's physically doing all this. All right, 10%, uh, 10% partisan. And the spider's like, hey, you know, he doesn't even do that to students. So the kid's not going to survive this. Match takes one of the prior swords, practices his swing, and bunts every last blade that comes at him just so they fall to the ground. And... Much to Rainus's belief, he's like, all right, yeah, this kid's not using magic. All right, cool. Apologizes. Mash does not accept that apology, funny enough. And introduces himself. Mash introduces himself. He's like, ah, this is the guy that Professor Wahlberger, Headmaster Wahlberg, was telling him about, saying that he is, if I can remember exactly what he said about Mash, give me one second. Uh... He's a he's he's a special situation, but he has a good heart and asks Rainus to look after Mash, which is very nice. So it is very clear that Headmaster knows he doesn't have magic. Apparently, when you're Headmaster and everybody else has their literal heads up their buttholes, I already said ass up their asses. You can tell, oh, yeah, this kid doesn't have magic. He's kind of cool. And he's speaking from the heart. OK. <laughs> Obviously, Rainies, he is a divine visionary. He can tell he doesn't have magic either. <clears throat> In addition to the spider that's freaking out, going, yeah, he doesn't have magic. And so he tells him, <laughs> he tells him, 
Uh, he gives him this handkerchief, this magical handkerchief that when you wipe yourself, it heals you, which has rabbits. We get a fun, funny joke where Matt's like, do you like rabbits? And Rainus is just staring at him, just deadpan. It's like, oh, yeah, well, I'll just, I'll, I'll use it. Tells him, be careful. He knows he's there to fight Abel. Uh, the old man said that you you both are going after the same goal. They both want to be divine visionary. Abel has a lot of magic. Like his type of magic is pretty high for the him being a student. So be careful. And he tells Mash, no matter what, get your goal of being the divine visionary. And um, <clears throat> excuse me, because he was caught off by Mash catching you know the swords with elementary magic. But he's like, all right, cool. But you make sure you get that goal. And then he mash goes, okay, cool, thank you, appreciate that. And he goes, now don't you know, don't don't be fooled. This is for my own ends, all right. I to have an ally, I I like allies who are able to do things on their own. So you make sure you do it. And mash is like, I can tell he's a good guy. Pretty sure he is. But um, towards the end of this, in his. We, we hear his thoughts, obviously. Rainus is saying, you know, <laughs> you can be a divine visionary without having magic. But in order to do so, you need to beat everybody else who's using magic and just for that I say, I am stronger than your magic. Pretty cool that we have multiple characters that are like, oh, you don't have magic. I'm not judging you. Even though everybody else is a freaking sheep. I ain't judging you. I like that. And most of the people who would know the secret are not going to be like, hey, everybody, he can't use magic because they're not a-holes. It's pretty funny. Uh, Mash does get to Abel. He pushes the door open the right way the first time. But then he thinks about the little cream puff uh, plushie that Lemon made for him. and punches the hell out of that door. It does like, do you destroy every door you come across? I was going to knock. Crink. That's what episode ends. Uh, if I'm correct. Next episode is Mash Burn Dead and the survival of the fittest. Mash is pretty fit. He, he His abs are pretty tight that he can make a sword that stabs him, not move. So pretty sure Mash is going to survive this. Be pretty interesting to see if this only lasts an episode. Uh, this episode from me. Straight up four out of five <clears throat> and i hope you guys i hope you guys can hear me properly there's someone's having a party outside <clears throat> but anyway uh four out of five because of the swerve the show keeps swerving me and i appreciate it because they follow through so well you think oh man all right these two are gonna fight oh okay so the one guy fights now they gotta go catch this other guy oh he comes back okay cool so now maybe fennel oh no Fen's brother is immensely strong and beat the hell out of this guy. And then he tests his mash. And when he's doesn't even he uses like a little tiny percent of his power. Ma All right. Mash is stronger than a normal student. Doesn't even need to use magic. Gotcha. And you find out that mash has more allies. He has more people that are actively rooting for him. Love it. Uh, I do like that. Adler seems to be the I guess you can call him uh, Gryffindor's. <laughs> they seem to be they seem to be the not a holes. They seem to be the guys that are like, all right, we don't we're not judging folks. We just want to have a good and fair world. Which is funny. Cause even uh Rainus, he mentioned earlier, he like this world is not short of I wanna say uh what he says. He says the world is not short of I want to say bad things or bad people. He says their world has no shortage of problems. There we go. So it sounds like they actually picked a good person to be divine visionary. Even though he's, he's still in school, he's just the top older kid. But good job. Uh, four, definitely four out of five. I'm, I'm actually looking forward to this final battle. I don't know how many episodes are going to be in this first season. I need to look that up. But a good episode all around. The Swerve was great. Seeing another immensely powerful character is great. I'm looking forward to seeing him fight whoever this innocent zero person is. Again, I like the name. It was a little bit off-putting that last episode. That he just kind of mentioned innocent zero. And we're, I guess we're supposed to go, ooh, 
Ah. But it's a good, it's a cool name. But let me know what you think in the conversation down below, please. Do not forget, hit that like button. Subscribe if you have not, and hit the notification bell to be notified of more videos like this one. Thank you once again for listening to me talk about mash your magic and muscles. Please be good, be blessed. Wash those hands. Take care of yourselves. Be good to yourselves and be good to others. Either way it goes, please don't be a jerk. All right? Sincerely, take care of yourself. Enjoy life. Be easy. Realize there are people out there to care about you, all right? Reach out to somebody if you're feeling alone. My social medias are right there in the description below. Feel free to follow me. Send me a message. I will surely respond. Just don't be a jerk. And with that being said, guys, I am Shane. I'll see you next time. We'll muscle through it.